I, you know what, Paul? I was trying to pinpoint a lot of things during uh, during this past week uh, about mm-hmm. us. You know, and you know yeah. what though? We we have a lot of friends, a lot of people that we've collaborated with all over. You know, for over the years that we've been doing this. And, yeah. You know, you got. If you want to get the information, you want you want to get you know the, the all this stuff about the Buffalo Bills. You know, you got Talbot and you got Perino, and they, and they do a great job over there. If you want to, if you want the the guys that just go all out. And they're, they're all pro bills and a bunch of other things. You can go and find that group. Or you want the guys that do the breakdowns, you can find that group. And I was like, where do we fit in, Paul? I was right. like, we talked about a little bit the other a couple of weeks ago. I was like, we're just the guys that like having a good time, guys. Yeah, like true story. We'll be sitting at, you pulled up to the bar, 10 wings, talking about, yeah, but, yeah, but. We seem yeah. to be the yeah, but guys. Yeah, like, and- yeah, that's great, but. And I think uh, yeah, I don't want to. I I think it's fair to say that like the version that you see of us here is literally exactly what you run into when you see us in public. Like when we did 100%. the hashtag golf tournament, like wh- everybody that came to meet us and play in the tournament, which was a great time. So thank you everybody oh, again who fun. raised money for uh, Matthew Twenty Five Farms, the hashtag charity of, of, of last season. Um, you know we had a we had a great time. And the feedback we got often later was you guys are exactly what you are on on your social medias, on YouTube. You guys are genuine. I heard that from multiple people. I think that's yeah. totally true. We, this is who we are. We would be sitting at the bar, eating wings, having the exact same conversation that yeah. we do now or watching a game and having the exact same conversation we are now. You know, that's that's just what it is. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. And then we we had mentioned it in a previous episode that we were talking about. I mean, we've been doing this for nine years, Paul. And this, yeah. this, this was born... Hashtag was born due to a lot of our phone conversations. Yeah. We're like, why don't we just put this on tape? Yep. And a lot of people actually enjoy it. So that being said, Paul. Yep. (laughs) A lot of people are high on taking a running back. Yeah. But. (laughs) And. The the guy that is the hot topic for a lot of Buffalo Bills fans, I'll put it right on the screen for us. This monster. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Brees Hall. Brees and I get Hall. It. I get it, right? Uh, everyone gets it. We get it. 100, 125%. 5'11", 217. This guy, he passes the eye test. He passes, you know, a lot of things. He's been highly touted. Obviously, what you're seeing um, on your screen is from PFF. Mm-hmm. Um, however, however, Paul has a little bit of his reservations. So let me just go through the pros and cons real quick. Cause if you guys can't read it, uh, as a receiver, he's been one of the most difficult running backs to bring down in the country. Balance is tremendous. Can get in and out of awkward body positions, accustomed to running, uh, behind less than seller run blocking at Iowa state thing. Seems like he'd be a fit in Buffalo. Wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. Cons lacks the ideal burst out of his cuts that you'd want in the NFL. A lot of things could be said similar to Devin Singletary. I mm-hmm. think there were some run there were some runs that Devin Singletary had had in his career that if he had a little bit more breakaway speed, he'd been gone. He'd probably have eight or nine more touchdowns. Um, worried a little about a uh, worried a little about his tackle breaking numbers translating at his height. <laughs> Can run between the tackles, not going to uh, not going to drive through a defensive lineman. Hmm. Mm. In a zone blocking scheme, Paul. Yep. So I want you to bestow upon the hashtag nation. What is your reservations about Hall, even though he's becoming so highly touted? He's such a hot topic right now. Well, so let's kind of back up that conversation, right? Okay. All right. We're saying that, you know, running back is a need for Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, There's also many needs for Buffalo. You've got Tremaine Edmonds on a contract year. You've got, uh, you know, no corner outside of Dane Jackson on your roster. Uh, you know, like <laughs> cor- corner is a definitive need. You just signed, you know, you just signed Bates to a deal. But again, that deal is not necessarily a starter level money. So 
guard is still in play. If you got Saffold on a one-year deal, your wide receiver room is Diggs, Gabe Davis, and then just guy the Crowder, but Crowder's on a one-year deal. You know, like there's definitely positions of need, right? Yes. You got Devin Singletary coming into it, you know, coming up closer and closer. Every year is closer and closer to the contract year. Um, and they've tried to replace him a few times, you know? Um, and so running back is a sneaky need. And it's probably the one that's a lot of people gravitate towards because it's the fun pick, right? Yes. It's, you know, you're talking about a guy who's going to touch the ball 20 times a game, like major impact player. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fun. And down near the bottom of, you know, down near the bottom of the first round, you can get some good players. Um, you can, it's a mixed bag, right? Like if you take a look at the running backs drafted just in the last four years from 20 to the end of the first round, that 20 to 32, it's a mixed bag. You know, you've got, uh, Travis Etienne is down there. He was, you know, gone for the season, right? Uh, last season. Yeah. But it is a collection of some, some pretty good calls. Josh Jacobs was down there, you know? So it's a, it's an interesting spot that Buffalo is in because it's an ideal spot to land a running back but I don't know if it's Brees Hall. And the reason that I say that is first off, the other running back that everybody's talking about is Kenneth Walker. And he is a animal. He's five foot nine and built like an absolute bowling ball, <laughs> right? <laughs> Couldn't catch a cold if you dropped him in the North pole, <laughs> but he is just a thumper. A just so, thumper. just so everybody knows too, real quick. If you uh, subscribe to the Patreon page and you get our scouting scout, scouting breakdowns, <laughs> those are some of the breakdowns. Paul oh, that's does. exactly what we talk he about. He intertwines yeah. a lot of that stuff. He's yeah, like, exactly this guy's not too bright of a player. You know, he's like that guy that if you asked him, where were you last night between five and seven? He says, or where were you between five and seven? He goes, kindergarten. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. So. As much as I, and there's a lot to like about Brees Hall. Um, will he fit into a zone blocking scheme? 100%, right? 100% would be a great offensive fit. So I get it, right? That's the guy you're talking about? <laughs> this yeah. maniac. Yeah. Look at him. Look at that. <laughs> I would not. Uh, no. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I'm not. But, wow. He's an animal. Yeah. PFF has him at what? 221. Yeah, two eleven. Two eleven. They have a two eleven. Yeah, when he was fourteen. Look at that. <laughs> Ridiculous. Who is this? Cody Paul. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know who Cody Paul is, look oh, it up. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. You'll have fun. So to talk about Brees Hall, is he a well-rounded right. running back? You know, he he probably if we talk about the the player who can most likely do it all for you, Brees Hall probably can most likely do it all for you more so than any other player in this draft at yeah, that position. Yeah. Right? Balance is as a, as the, the right. profile set. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot that he can do. Is he a first round player? I mean, I don't know. It depends on your need at running back. You know, we've seen some drafts where two running backs go in the first round and that means Brees Hall would be a first round pick. We've seen other drafts where running back slips to the second and this might be one of those drafts, right? Yeah. Um, it, it could be. But the one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit about Brees Hall uh, is not the fact that, you know, when like it's it's a weird stat, right? To, so, yeah, to, uh, before you get to the stat, though, for me, just real quick before you get to Brees Hall is a guy that like. Like a Kansas City type, mm -hmm. you know how Kansas City traded back up into the round and got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, right? Who all seems like that a guy. lot of space. Clyde yeah. Edwards, a very talented player. Another player drafted at the bottom of the first round, right? Yeah. But but needs a little bit of space. But is, is, is a guy that if he's a first rounder, it's because another team traded back in after already making their first round pick. You know what I mean? Like yep. he'd be their second first round pick. So if you're talking about a team like, I, I don't know, the Jets mm -hmm. that have multiple picks. You know, if you look right. at all those teams that have multiple picks that have running back needs – Hall is a guy that would be their second pick, you yeah. know what I mean, in that round. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Now, he's not a player that's going to that's gonna blow you off the charts with, uh, you know, with his play speed. I know that sounds weird because the guy ran a 4-3-9, right? But when you watch him, everything he does is real long. 
Um, that's not really what bothers me, right? The stat that really bothers me, and, and I thank PFF for kind of backing this up because as I watched him, I was kind of like, something feels weird about this. You know how, Mar, sometimes you watch, like you'll be watching a player and you're like, ah, something just feels a little strange. Let me go look at the advanced data. You look at the advanced data and goes, and you go, that's what I, that's what it was, right? You can look at the advanced data and go, that's, that's, that's why I'm feeling weird. That is the reason why. And then you go back yeah. and you see exactly what you were looking for. You ever have that? I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of the way that it, it the way that we do the uh, scouting for our channel, for those of you, yeah. if you want to take a peek behind the fourth wall, you know, yeah. and I think we talked about it in an episode before. Um, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. We talked. Yeah, about we, we don't scouts, start yeah. at the combine. and We don't start at, yeah. the, at the senior bowl. No. We start with the tapes. Then we go to the senior bowl. Then you go right. to the combine. Right. The senior mm -hmm. bowl just kind of helps you prioritize who Buffalo is looking <clears throat> yeah. at. So, yeah. You yeah. know, if we, if we had, you know, all day to do this stuff. Oh, God. You know, Oh, if we you know had that. access to go down oh. to the senior bowl, I would oh. have so much fun with that. Ooh. Yeah. So Brees Hall, again, is a very, very good player. So I'm going to get a little critical, but it's only because it's something that I probably don't think people are really talking about that, uh, talking about enough. Yeah. And while it is a weird stat, he ranked seventh in the country for missed tackles forced. 74 forced missed tackles, right? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Right? That's a lot and that of was guys just around in 2021. Him. That yeah. Was just in 2021. Right. Yeah. It's the yards after contact that just suck the soul right out of my body. <laughs> 2.8 on average, 2.8 yards after contact. PFF Ugh. has that ranked as the 122nd uh, in the country, which is that does horrifying. I that it's is I horrifying. Thought. That's a player that when he gets touched, it's over. Right now, granted, he ranks set, he ranks 29th in yards after contact. So often what that means is he either was instantly stopped or he just kept going because this is also a player who was seventh and carries 15 yards and over uh, last season. He had uh, what, 22 carries of 15 yards or more. So the differentiation in that stat, why it looks so weird, right? A yeah. ton of force missed tackles. So he is tough to get a hand on right yards after contact are in the basement because it's often once he gets touched it's over or he's going to take he's going to take the ball 70 yards downfield that that's the differentiation in the stat and that's what kind of bothers me is i see a ton of carries over 15 yards for a guy who has a lot of speed but on again on tape he doesn't you don't look at him and go oh that's a 4-4 guy you can look at some guys and say oh that's a 4-4 player he, he doesn't strike me like that. Yes, he pulls away from people downfield, but he's the same speed six yards in as he is 12 yards in as he is 20 yards in. So it looks a little deceiving, um, but that the yards after contact are a big deal for me. As, okay, so Especially when you start going, like I know in zone blocking schemes, it's not as dirty, right? It's not as dirty. The goal is to get cleaner, right? But that's something that concerns me. So just to just to kind of you know get, give the, another statistic for everybody, I mean, the explosion factor that Paul likes to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Broad jump ten six, vertical forty. Yep. Forty yard dash four three nine. Yep. So he has the straight line speed and explosiveness that you would want out of running back. I think Paul, are we you trying to are you what you're trying to say? I think because we know at the NFL level it is hard for players to break away. But at four three nine, you're gonna you're gonna break away from some of those runs. I mean, you're gonna have yeah. you're gonna have the ability to break away and make some of them runs that previous Bills running backs in recent history have not. Very recent it, history. That's Devin number Singletary, one. Zach Moss, these are all yeah. guys who get caught from behind. And no offense to those players, right? Within the first fifteen yards of a play, they're very dangerous. You take them past the first fifteen yards. And and they're not they're not dynamic players, right? No. Reese Hall is a dynamic player, yes. regardless of where you are on the field. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you this, Paul. The fact, I mean, trying to break down those statistics: yards after contact, two point eight, one hundred twenty second, missed tackles, forced seventh. Is this guy? Because we we like to use different words to describe running backs. This guy's a horse. Mm -hmm. In the fact that this, Paul, do you think it's just his vision where yeah. he sees the guy right in front of him? He's able to elude that tackle, but 
is not able to foreshadow the next guy coming in. Right. So he breaks that tackle and then immediately gets brought down by a guy he doesn't see. So is that usually what ha- have you, is that, is that, are those some of the things because I haven't gone to his tape yet. Yeah. Are those some of the things that you've seen when you've watched his tape and the He's fact stu- that Yeah, he's super patient, Mario. Like yeah, he okay. gets he gets the ball and he just he just waits for it. Like right? a bell, like Le'Veon Bell back in exactly the Pittsburgh days. Like bell. It's, okay. ve- it's very similar. It's which, actually very similar. And that's one of the things he does is he also runs pretty upright, which explains the yards after contact stuff, right? Like so he did, runs uh, very upright. Did, did Pittsburgh have his own blocking scheme when Bell was there? They had to have. I'll check it out. We'll put it on the description of the video if it was, but yeah. we're going to let you guys know. But it, that's that's interesting, though, because mm-hmm. in, my, in, my, in my break, that's what that says to me. And the fact, okay, he could, it might be, he might lack a little vision where if he didn't really have the best offensive line and he was having to make all, all these guys miss, he might have just narrowed his focus down to just yeah. what was immediately right in front of him. Yeah. And then a- didn't see guys coming off the edge or other guys that were coming off a- at him. It might, might, yeah. might, might not have been all his fault, though. There's so PFF does this really well as well, where they give you his best games and then his worst games. And that's yeah. important to know, right? Because you want to see the mix, right? I like the middling games. I don't like to go watch the games where they were, uh, the you know, they, right. Yeah. I don't really like to judge based off that. Give me, give me everything else, right? Don't give me the three best games, the three worst games. Give me everything else. So what does um, that say? Is that like saying like last year going, Watch Josh Allen versus New England in the playoffs and then watch Josh Allen versus Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But there was a game against TCU this year where it is like a near flawless game from his decision making, right? When he gets oh, okay. the ball, it is – he makes all the right decisions in that game. Now, there are other games where he doesn't, where his patience kills him. And I think that's one of the things that's kind of a little bit of an issue as far as learning the NFL is the game's a lot faster, right? So yes. being that patient, you don't really have that luxury, right? Being as patient as he is. Um, but with with all that being said, I want to point out one thing that you and I talk about an awful lot. The reason his vision might be so good is because he touched the ball more than any other college running back the last two seasons. Do you want to guess what his total number of touches were the last two seasons, Mark? We have to be careful of this because a couple of names are going to come back up, Paul. Yeah, I know. I know. So what? if you had to give me a number of a number that scares you a little bit for two seasons worth of touches, what's that number? What number? For two seasons. What, what, yeah. what scares me is when a, when a, when a player has – Close to the 300 range yep. of touches per year. Yep. Yeah. 590, Brees Hall. Led, led touches. That's a lot of touches. That's a lot. And, and don't get me wrong. Like, he could do everything for you. He definitely can catch, right? He's got speed. Again, a little upright. So, if if you're asking him to run in between the tackles um, or in between the guards, like, in that area, that's going to be a tough sell for him, right? Because mm-hmm. he, he's just so upright. Um, it's, he's a, he's a, he's a really strange player to really like. I really like Brees Hall. I just don't, I, I'm just not willing to put my eggs in that basket. Um, if he's in the second round, go get him. Like I, if he falls to the second round, go get him. Like that's where I am. First round pick. I'm too conservative for that. Second round. If he's in the second round, you go get him. What you go trade and you do what you got to do and you can go get him. And I won't feel, I won't feel bad about that. I think we talked about that in the Brandon Bean episode where we talked about Brandon Bean's draft grades. The where a player is drafted makes so much difference to me personally, right? If Brees Hall's there in the second round and you go get him, I'm okay with, I'm okay with what happens there, right? If you take him the first round, I'm going to feel it's kind of a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. I mean, we would obviously see the reason why we would know why. They took him. Yeah. hundred percent. You're like, okay, we know what you're trying to do. You've tried this before and re recent history will show. I mean, you look at hall. You said how many 590, what 590 touches, touches, 590 touches. And you look at this guy, he's 5'11, 217, 439, 40 inch vert and 10, six broad. Mm-hmm. So he passes the eye test. Paul. A little, a, a, an individual who you know very well had 
661 touches in two years. 5'10", 225, ran a 439, had a 36-inch vert, so four inches smaller, and had a 10'3 broad jump. You know who that was? 10'3"? Wait, wait, wait. What was the vert? 36. I don't know. It, this will give it away. But he had 661 touches his two previous seasons, sat out 2020. Who is it? And he was taken in the second round with the just, 41st just pick. Just tell me who it is, Mario. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, yeah. 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 So you're talking about a guy from a just a straight statistical point of, of height, weight, speed, explosiveness, touches. Yeah. And Taylor was taken in the second round. If Taylor was in this draft right now, would he be taken in the first round? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I still well, think then so. why why don't you why don't you why wouldn't Hall be a first rounder then? Well, for the same, so I'm going to make a different player comparison. Um, okay, all right. So I'm I'm going mean, to. It's go fine. Back. I mean, that's I just it just popped out to me when I st- when I saw his forty, and mm-hmm. I saw his explosive and the way that you talked about him, and I know you liken a lot of running backs to each other. Right. Uh, I mean, David Johnson was a guy that blew some of the combine stats out of the that's water. Who I'm, that's who I'm going to say. You know, oh, okay. All because right. if you, you look at if you look at those combine numbers, like if we're just comparing combine numbers, Brees Hall is closer to David Johnson than he is Jonathan Taylor, right? Because David Johnson, uh, I get David Johnson checked in at 224, just a real quick FYI, right? Um, but David Johnson did most of the drills. Uh, he did do the three cone. Brees Hall didn't, which I find interesting that he didn't do the three cone. Uh his David Johnson's vertical is 41 and a half. Which is crazy to me. Uh, Brees Hall was what 40? 40 mm-hmm. inch vert. Mm-hmm. Uh, Broad his, was you're right. It, his was 10 7. Yep. Hall's David Johnson was 10, 10, 10. Yep, exactly. Right. So the number he only ran a four five forty? Four five forty. Right. So a little wow. bit that's that's where the differentiation is, right? But the explosion is definitely there. But David Johnson, another player who you know it ran very upright, had similar had similar issues in college where he would just get caught up at the line. You saw that. You still see that in the pros. David Johnson looks like a power back, but isn't. He's he doesn't not run between back. the tackles very well. Yeah, that's he right. He doesn't. Right. So he's a player that Bruce Arians identified. If I can just get him on the perimeter, this yeah. guy's an animal. And he it's did. Over. That's what Arians did. And nobody else has been able to recreate that. But no. Brees Hall is very similar in that respect. If you're looking for a guy who's going to be able to run the football you know, on the inside of an offensive line, Brees Hall's not your player. If you're looking for a guy that you can throw out there and swing passes that you're going to get, uh, you know, on the outside, then Brees Hall is a great player for you, right? But that it is depends. not a first round pick. Is that what the, that's your that's your explanation? I, like, I don't know. If I, I need a three down back if he's a first round. If he's a first round pick, I need a three down back. I don't know if it's a first round pick for Buffalo. Okay. You know, like All if right. he was going right. to Arizona, I'd be like, that makes sense. Could right, he replace they, McCaffrey? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, because they don't have a quarterback. No, because this is not this is not somebody that you want to give the ball to 35. You don't want to give him 25 touches a game running the ball. Like that's okay. not what you, you want to leverage him as as a as a weapon. So okay. You know, All like right. again, if he went to Arizona, I go, okay, that makes a bit of sense, right? Arizona doesn't need to run. They they like to run the ball, but they also like to get their guys in space. Okay, this makes sense. If he goes to San Francisco, he'd be super dangerous in San Francisco. Super Ooh, dangerous in San yeah. Francisco. Right? Yeah. But again, now, in, in Buffalo, I don't know if it's a first round pick. All right. The million dollar question, Paul. Yeah. The one that I love. Yeah. Cause you saw this guy. You watched him a little bit. It says power, burst, running, vision, between the tackles, not between the tackles, gap. We have Josh Allen as our quarterback in in Buffalo. Yep. All right, if you're three down back, that doesn't mean that you're on the field on third down just to catch swing passes. That means you can pick up a blitz. Mm -hmm. What have you seen on tape about Hall in in his pass pro? Because we we already know that, that Singletary and Moss, Singletary his first year, he did a little bit better than he did last year uh moss he seemed to regress a little bit in his past pro which why he wasn't on the field in my opinion a lot Mm -hmm. and then and and singletary was kind of like taking over the reins there as well because so it was twofold 
What do you see from Hall as far as his pass pro? Okay, first off, I just want to point out, he's had 590 touches in two seasons. There's not many times where he's on the field and he's not getting the football. <laughs> okay. So we With are, offensive we are not, yeah, we are not at a point where I can give you a ton of info on that because okay. again, right. you take a look at the total number of touches and there he is often getting the football, right? Um, outside of that, understand the line that he played behind was not very good. So super leaky, right? Yeah. And what I mean when I say why that makes it harder to judge is he's just going first guy in, right? It's not assignment. It's the, he's got first guy yeah. in and there's probably somebody come over the full head of steam, you know, because the line wasn't yeah. great. So it, it is actually kind of tough to judge his pass pro um, in my opinion, because it's, he's just fixing holes in the boat, man. Like he's just throwing his body <laughs> at the first thing he sees because that line is just not very good. Um, okay. So it, it's really tough to understand assignment pass protection, right? Where he can be patient. Uh, I would not say he's patient in pass pro. I would say he he finds where he thinks he needs to go, and that's and that's where he puts his feet. Um, but again, like in pass pro situations, um, you know, uh, it, he'll be a work in progress. Okay. All right. You know that's that's, that's so where funny. I but I like him. I, you know, as I said, but I just don't. I just don't like him as a first round player for Buffalo. There are other teams who will value him more than Buffalo will. Absolutely, uh, in my in my opinion. No question. I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if the running back first round running backs are coming back into play um, due to the recent yeah. history of like a Saquon Barkley and right. Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Christian McCaffrey. A lot of those guys that have been first round running backs, you're starting to see they're they're, they're commanding a lot of the. Um, I mean, because I, I think the most complete back in the NFL right now, mm-hmm. and I can I'll catch heat for this, and it's fine. Uh, is Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah, uh, that guy's gonna be on the field for me all the time because yeah. he's understands the pass pro game. Mm-hmm. This guy can catch the ball in the backfield. He can run in between the tackles and around the tackles. He could break an eighty yarder for, at any time. Mm-hmm. And I understand. And and people might say, oh, what about Henry? Well, I don't put Henry above. Elliot because of his past reception skills. I know he right. can catch the ball, but I don't like Henry out in receiving. Right. So I, I want to point something out about draft history, right? So draft yeah. history says that for bottom of the first round is, is in recent years where you can get guys like Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, who I mentioned before, was just yeah. hurt uh, in 2020. Clyde Edwards Hilaire was 32nd off the board. He was first back off the board. 2019, Josh Jacobs was the first back off the board at 24. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2018 was a little bit of a different circumstance because Barkley went second overall, but then you had Rashad Penny at 27, Sony Michelle at 31. Um, you had Leonard Fournette at four in 2017 McCaffrey at eight in 2017. We're not looking at that situation where these guys are going to go in the first 10 picks, right? No. So history says in the teens, no running backs going to get taken. Right. Gotcha. So this is not a situation where if you're, I, if you're eyeing up a running back, you got to jump too high to go. Right. But yeah. I do want to point out that in that 2017 draft, yeah, Fournette went four, McCaffrey went eight, Dalvin Cook went 41, Joe Mixon went 48, Alvin Kamara went 67, Kareem Hunt went 86. Right. Super, super deep draft. This is not that draft. This draft is closer to the, you know, outside of Barkley, this draft is closer to Sony Michelle, Rashad Penny. Nick Chubb was taken 35th. Then you had Ronald Jones at 38, Carry on Johnson at 43, Darius Geis at 59. It's a graveyard outside of Nick Chubb. Yeah. Graveyard. This draft is closer to that. So that's what I mean when I say mm. I, I like Brees Hall a lot. I just don't know if he's this year's Sony Michelle. Because I loved Sony Michelle coming out of college. Law, I thought Michelle was a better player than Chubb. And translating the NFL game, I believe that. I, I don't know. I, I I, I'm a little worried that Brees Hall is, is this year's Sony Michelle. Oh, because, I mean, you look at it. Super Bowl champion so- Sony Michelle. Let me just – Super yeah. Bowl champion Sony Michelle, but still this so, Sony Michelle. So here we go. I just want to do – I just want to list this off really quick. Jets four, have number – pick number four, pick number 10. Mm-hmm. And then they don't pick again until 35. Right. And then they pick at 38 as well. Mm-hmm. Right. One of those picks seems like Brees Hall pick. You look at the Giants. Mm-hmm. 
paying a ton of money for Barkley. They might want to get out of that contract. They pick at five. They pick at seven. Um, and then they don't pick again until 36. Mm-hmm. Right. Who knows if it's 36? Yep. Uh, other teams with multiple first round picks, Kansas City Chiefs, 20, 20, uh, 29 and 30, they're not going to be picking another running yep. back. And then again, we didn't think the Bills were either. So Philadelphia Eagles at 15 and 16. There's, the, yeah, they're the 15, 16, and I think at 19 too, right? Uh, yes, they do. Yeah, that's dangerous. But this is this is one of those rounds where it may break the the teen, you know, in the teens, mm-hmm. where they get picked because there's a lot of multiple first round picks with a lot of teams that need a running back, and they're right. like, listen, let's yeah. let's get our third, let's let's ride the let's ride the game for five years, mm-hmm. you know, tag them on this on the fifth year uh, fifth year option, and then we'll we'll move on and find another running back. Right. Yeah. The Detroit Lions, Paul. They have the second and the 32nd and then the 34th again. So they could be in on a running back, even though they have a ton of needs. So yeah. getting a rookie running back that can do a few yeah. things for um, DeAndre Swift hasn't really. No, hasn't he hasn't. Been the, he hasn't been the guy that they were hoping for in 2020. He'd be a nice change of pace guy if Hall, if you want Hall to go on first and second down. Yeah, I agree. And you want to put Swift on third. Sure. I understand that. Um, other than that, with the multiple first, I just want to go over the f- multiple first round picks with some. Yeah. Did I miss any teams that have multiple first rounders? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, just a just a word and note: we haven't had a running back drafted in the teens since 2015. It was Melvin Gordon and Todd Gurley went tenth. I remember, was the last oh, time yeah, a running back yeah. was taken in the teens. Was it's Melvin weird Gordon. because that seems like eons ago for how the running back position is, is graded. I know. Wasn't that it was long only ago? Seven years ago. <laughs> I know. Right? You're looking you're like, oh, Gurley, he's washed. Gordon, he's washed. And it's like, geez, that was only 2015, guys. Like, that All was right. 2015 draft. I know, right? Well, Paul, this was a little longer than usual. This is more of our Patreon stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long one. That's okay. So, like I said, guys, if you want more breakdowns like this, um, uh, this is. This is what we're going to be having on the Patreon page uh, leading up to the NFL draft while Paul eats a corn dog. Are you serious? It's a sausage on a stick, my friend. There's a sausage wrapped in a pancake. How symbolic. So, like like I said, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot more of these breakdowns, but they're going to be over. They're going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit, on, and they're going to be on the Patreon page. So, Paul and I are going to be doing some more breakdowns for possible. Shit, why do you have? I'm doing the breakdown, and you're just like hogging that sausage on a stick. Breakfast of champions, right here, buddy. Yep. Fifty seconds in the microwave, quick out the door. <laughs> Protein, <laughs> carbs, and about eight pounds of maple sugar or maple syrup. You know, breakfast okay, chips. Gotta stay warm can... in this in this buffalo in this right. buffalo fake winter. Yeah, let me let me see if I could start this again and do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want, uh, this is what we're doing over on the Patreon page. So we're gonna have more of these breakdowns of possible Buffalo Bills prospects. We wanted to put this one out to the public so you guys can actually get a little bit of a uh, you know a sense of what we're gonna be doing over on Patreon. Remember, seven dollars and sixteen cents a month um, for all access behind the scenes pri- uh, uh, episodes that we're gonna be breaking down. And uh, make sure that you join that Patreon because, you know, Paul has his battle with, you know, 8 Mile today. His knee's weak, arms are heavy. Um, So make sure that you go and check out Paul's breakdowns over there. They are not only just, you know, all right, this is is why it would work. He actually breaks down why it would work in Buffalo and has a little bit of humor intertwined with it. I've I've seen some of the ones that he's recorded already. They're hysterical. I'm going to be jumping and throwing my name into the hat because I got time today to do that. I'm actually kidless. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So, um, yeah, check it out. Um, and we are going to be going to our next episode. So stay tuned.